The U.S. Navy is missing its recruiting goal by 6,700 sailors. Senate Republicans are now calling out the Navy secretary for focusing less on recruiting and building ships and more on DEI enforcing COVID mandates and a climate agenda. Listen. You have recruitment challenges. You refuse, no, to, you refuse to admit the DEI is a part of this. You're firing qualified people who are well-trained, and you sit here so smugly she to is. act like none of that has any impact on the readiness of our Navy. Senator, we, we recontacted 3,500 of the 4,800 people who were fired. You know how many actually decided to come back to the Navy? In how the many? Court? Two. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. Well, that Senator, Missouri Senator Eric Schmidt, joins us now. Senator, you were clearly fired up for all the right reasons. Yet the Navy Secretary seems to think, oh, well, that validates our decision that only two people wanted to come back. Yeah, I think he thought he had some gotcha stat there. And as I said, shocker, it's like no wonder they were so disrespected by their own government. You know, I mean, th these folks, uh, the political class in Washington that is now part, you know, like like Secretary Del Toro, they're completely out of touch. I mean, the military's been this great meritocracy for a long time yeah. where people from anybody, any background can have a ticker tape parade thrown from a New York as a war hero. And they have infused this divisive DEI ideology now. Uh, it's dividing people by race, separating the room. I mean, there's a reason why the military, you get a haircut and wear a uniform. It's to build cohesion, not this kind of division that's, again, been driven by the, by the left here. Absolutely. The military pushes this nonsense that our diversity is our strength when it's our unity inside the military as Americans that is our strength. You know, the Senate Armed Services Committee, of which you're a part, has traditionally been a bipartisan, very gentlemanly committee. Is that changing a little bit because of the, the political nature in which uh, these left wing forces are, are infiltrating and pushing into the military? Yeah, I mean, look, I've been very consistent. I think we have to speak out against this, Pete. Uh, I think that we have to be, we can't shy away from the issue because, again, this this divisive ideology, this sort of cultural Marxism that what is what DEI is, is uh, is really dangerous, and it causes division. And by the way, um, you know, the Navy, for example, was 20% off of its recruiting goals last year. It's 30% off so far this year. It is completely naive not to think that, again, pushing this political agenda that the, that the military has isn't affecting recruiting. Of course it is. Course. And by the way, they also fired, you know, thousands of well-qualified, trained military men and women because they refused to take the COVID shot. And I think that's worth pointing out. But as you saw in that, that clip there, there's no apology. Uh, there's no remorse. Um, and so I think it's incumbent upon, you know, the Congress to hold these folks accountable. And our readiness suffered. As you know well, the Navy is retiring more ships than it is building, shrinking yep. the Navy uh, as, it, as the Chinese Navy continues to grow. The obsession of the Navy, a green fleet, climate change. And they say it out loud, don't they? Yeah, Admiral Nimitz would be rolling over in his grave uh, to hear these folks, you know, talk about climate change being our biggest threat. No, actually, a nuclear holocaust might be, or communist China on the rise with ambitions for world domination. That's a much bigger threat. And to get these folks to even admit that uh, is, a, is an exercise. But you're right. Look, um, China now has a bigger Navy than we have. Not a better Navy, but a bigger Navy. We have four naval shipyards. They have 12. Each one of their 12, Pete, has greater capacity than all four of ours combined. Mind. So these are these are startling statistics. We've got to get serious about this if we're going to win the 21st century. You're exactly right. Well, Senator Eric Schmidt, I appreciate you uh, fighting on behalf of the warfighters, bringing up the subjects that we're all talking about uh, in our home. Senator, thank you very much. Thanks, Pete. You got it. I want to mention. Uh,